hello guys and welcome to daddy share space and so I had done a prelude to this particular video where I was talking big about how I was just gonna throw together a stand for the KS60 miter saw and I was moving quite meticulously you know I laid out my little two by fours cutting them here on the KS60 now to be honest I didn't have any of my plans drawn up I'm not big on doing that I need to get into it but basically I did some basic measurements of the KS120 base and I was deciding that I was going to use 2x4s to make two rectangular shaped frames one for the top where the saw would actually sit and then one for the base that would set at the bottom where the actual caster wheels would attach so as you can see here I'm just using the KS60 to cut all of my 2x4s to proper length and something that I didn't realize as I was doing this as I didn't really account for when you mill boards when you actually plane and joint them that you know obviously they become smaller and thus forth it throws your measurements off it's just a, another rookie mistake but basically this is kind of a behind the scenes of me just trying to figure this thing out trying to get better at my woodworking there's so many steps and, and different you know methods and ways to approach this and you know to me it seems simple enough just to build a rectangular frame put it together because the whole goal is not to make this project aesthetically pleasing it's only to just make something for the stand to sit on because the stand that it's sitting on now which is the, the DeWalt stand is stagnant and thus forth whenever I need to move the saw I have to pick the actual miter stand or the miter saw up off of the stand and then move the stand itself or attempt to lift both as a unit and they're not you know connected to one another so that can get to be kind of sketchy so I was going to upload the video of me you know basically talking about my big plans on what I was gonna do and I'm gonna be honest I actually approached this project feeling like oh this is gonna be low-hanging fruit I'm just going to, you know, get this done because I've built, you know, shop furniture like this in the past with zero problems. But I don't know if it's being rusty. I don't know if it's, you know, having some kind of paralysis through analysis with, you know, bringing in all the new tools and trying to, you know, figure out how to best create a workflow. But it is it has been well at least on this particular day it was a challenge for me to try to uh, hammer this down and and get it the way that I wanted to get it now as many of you know I work a 40 hour a week job I have a wife I have three daughters and my time in the shop is not as much as I would like it to be I mean I feel like I need a 48 hour day where I don't work 16 hours a day but rather I still work my eight and then I have t plenty of time to get rest but then the rest of that time I can actually use to basically grow in whatever area that I want to grow in but you know such is life I only have 24 hours and I have to try to squeeze everything in everything from cutting the yard to helping my wife around the house helping with the children and you know obviously managing everything on my day job this uh, you know I'm just long story short this project is not gonna go as expected but you're gonna get a you know you're getting a little behind the scenes of you know a little bit how I'm trying to move in my workflow here after cutting all my boards to length now I've decided I'm going to joint the boards. Now this is where I feel like having a larger jointer 
is better than having a smaller jointer because you know if you're going to joint longer boards it's easier to have a light a nice long bed to support your work now I know I do have the extensions here to be able to increase my base a little bit but I decided to pre-cut my boards to length and then come back and then joint smaller boards which I felt like would give me a little bit more control over the boards and as I'm doing this you know because it's not necessary that I actually mill these 2x4s up to make this project but I'm trying to work on multiple skills at one time you know if I don't joint how am I gonna get better if I don't plane how am I gonna get better how am I gonna get a feel for how to perform these actions and actually improve so I'm taking a relatively simple project and trying to follow a regimented flow to get the outcome that I see in my head so obviously from what I understand about jointing boards and getting square boards you want to first joint them and then after you joint them then you plane it you know you joint two sides and then you plane the uh, one side and then of course after you finish planing then that's where you're going to finish up with the table saw now one thing I have to say I, so I use the rigid hose I didn't use the festival hose in this uh, video on the jointer and I have to say it is a marked improvement I mean like it, it was pretty much a dust free action when I used the jointer but as you can see right here the planer ain't getting it you see it fire and snow all over the place and basically when I finished this I had you know sawdust all down the front of my clothes and so as I was doing it I felt like you know what I'm gonna have to to make some kind of a change or make some kind of adjustment now the things that I've considered my planer is out of warranty so I could actually order one of those bird shelix spiral cutters and install it in here but I believe those are about three or four hundred dollars if I'm not mistaken I have to go back and recheck those prices and so uh, that's one option of course it's not you know manufacturer specifications and you know I've modified things before but you know that's one option I can go with if I want to stick with this Dwalt or the other option is since I'm happy with the Rikon jointer they offer a planer that has the carbide cutters as well and that would be under warranty and from the factory so that is something that I might consider in the future just because as you can see here look at the mess I have to clean up because it makes larger shavings um, the even though I move to the bigger hoses is just not um, going to work out and this is one of the things I've always had problems with up to this point in the shop you know when I ever whenever I joint and plane I end up with stuff everywhere and then here I've moved on to the cutting of the uh, you know basically joining the last edge with the table saw and and then this moment I completely forgot that I have my dust collection so I'm just spewing dust everywhere eventually I figure it out and I go ahead and I put the hose on after cleaning it up I'm trying to be a little bit more mindful of cleaning things as I go because when things get too dusty things get lost and it, it just becomes a mess so as I said before I want to make this stand for the KS120 well let me be honest I'd rather just buy the festival stand and be done with it however I've spent a lot of money lately and um, I haven't been doing projects like you know I had planned to just because of different things that have been occurring and I just felt like let me just go out here and brute force a project to try to get the creative juices flowing and you know also add functionality to the KS120 because in my mind I'm thinking if I have both saws connected and ready to go you know that's up to especially if I add like say a t-track and some kind of stop block type of functionality then I can actually have like up to four stops on between the two saws and that's what it would be like too if I actually buy the capex stand so here you see me moving my four foot by eight foot MFT getting it in position 
for me to be able to utilize that shortly. So up to this point, I've cut my boards to length. I've jointed them on two sides. I planed them, and then now, and then I jointed the other side with the table saw. Here, I have totally forgot how these are assembled. So as you can see, I got it more in a square orientation, but eventually I realized that the square orientation is not exactly what I am looking for. So I rearranged the boards and get it back in line with how the base of the KS120 actually is. So I am getting everything arranged and as you can see I have my Craig form in there because I wanted to basically make this a quick project. I did not want to get involved with dowels or dominoes at this time because this is not really a finished type product or project so I didn't want to you know waste those resources on this particular project so here's where things start to kind of go off the rails I don't know why or how I believe I used two by fours on this the last time I used it but I haven't used it in a while and I drilled the holes here and, and they weren't looking right but for whatever reason, I didn't do any kind of test fit or test cut and, and try to assemble. I'm using my regular live boards here without doing any testing. And this is because in my mind, and as I said, in the in this before I started doing all this cutting, I had done a video saying this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to build this and I'm going to do that. I'm just going to throw it together, you know, today. And so I felt like I was kind of up against the clock. And even though I saw that these pocket holes were not looking right, um, I just, you know, kind of pushed forward. Now, there is a chance that the actual drill bit in here is a bit small for, for the application because I do, the drill bit that was in there before, the factory one, it actually finally broke. And so uh, the tip broke off. So I, I replaced it with the one that I have. But I think the one that I have is like for a smaller actual screw. And so uh, I just proceeded forward because I just wanted to get the project done. And then as you see here, and I have to be honest, I'm not a big fan of pocket holes. They're supposed to be convenient. They're supposed to be easy. But... I don't know if it's the angle, the torque, the whatever, or if these holes are too small. The bottom line is the bit tip just keeps slipping off. And I think part of it's because the foreman did not drill deep enough because I didn't adjust the setting the way that it needed to be adjusted. So that's all on me. So here I'm using those Bessie clamps to try to hold things in place to try to get these screws to go in. And I'm kind of doing a method where I kind of drill in a bit, back out, and then drill in just to go deeper. At this point, like I said, I'm starting to get a little bit impatient. And I'm just, you know, like I just want to get to the end of this project. And what ends up happening is because the pocket holes are not deep enough, it actually starts to split the board. And so you probably maybe you can't tell or whatever, but at this point, I'm pretty much at my wits end. I'm frustrated with the project, but I'm still thinking that maybe I can get this done. And so I'm pressing forward. Some of the screws heads are protruding from the workpiece. And I was like, you know what, I'll just pull out my grinder and I'll grind them down. But then I was also noticing that I was not getting a deep registration holding the uh, two boards to one another so once I finished putting in this last screw I kind of looked at it and I just got frustrated this, right here I just went off the rails I basically took a pilot hole bit drilled in the end and I have these huge screws they use a T30 Torx and I was just like I'm just gonna screw in the end because all this is is a shop project and I'm just gonna you know, drill in and just screw these screws in to, to hold this together because at this point I'm still wanting to press on and just finish the project. And this is where basically the final nail comes in the coffin. And um, after this, I pretty much have to just walk away from the project simply because I realized I spent all that time milling, 
Oh, so here I am trying to put those screws in. And I think the first one may have gone in okay. And which made me feel a little bit encouraged because I felt like, well, this should be a secure enough connection um, just to build this short term project. But then when I moved over to the second one, um, that's when I ran into basically the whole two by four splitting um, because obviously the pilot hole wasn't big enough or deep enough. So once the board started splitting, um, you know, I, I just took out my frustration on the rest of it. And I just went around and finished the last uh, two sides of this and just put it in because at this point I'm like, I don't care. I just, you know, I'm completely over the project at this time. And I feel like, you know what, I'll pick this up another day and I'll get back to it. But for right now, I'm quite agitated. And uh, but this is this is the process, you know. Sometimes I'm in the shop, I'm trying to build something, I get frustrated, and then I just walk away, and I may leave it for a few days, or just for a few moments, and then I come back, and I start afresh. But anyways, guys, that's the end of this time in the shop today. Take care.